Good afternoon. So after years and years of mostly trial and error and watching what other people do and reading a bunch of articles about how to successfully grow these, I think I finally got them figured out. I think I finally know what these guys want. And of course, we're talking mangoes. Compared to other tropical fruit trees, mangoes, <laughs> they are picky. However, I think once you address what they want, they do great. So, yeah, I think I finally cracked it. And, and of course, it, it, it's really the, the thing with mangoes, and this really also applies to the vast majority of tropical fruit trees, is when you look at, just like my watering, where, you know, the consensus was deep, thorough water. Uh, and also, if you look at the online forms about how to grow tropical fruit trees, almost every form that, that you will read talks about incorporating organic material into your soil amendments. Well, <laughs> no, especially for mangoes, they don't like it. Most trees don't want organic material in their ground. They want it on top of the ground, not in the ground. So I know I keep saying this, but mangoes need a particular type of soil, practically perfect soil, well-draining, um, very, very aerable, and the pH threshold just needs to be just right. If you can address all of that, the summer is not going to be an issue for them. The cold is really not an issue, though they, they, they can suffer some slight setback. But for the most part, they tolerate our winter, even in extreme exceptional years, which sometimes is kind of what you want. <laughs> so, yeah, mangoes. In, in many ways, when you look at it, the Central Valley, it really is prime mango climate just because our summers are so hot and dry that most of the pest issues, we're talking anthracnose, uh, powdery mildew, we don't get here. Uh, and that's because, I mean, Specific to powdery mildew, you know, it, 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 it needs kind of a uh, more of a coastal area. And we are as dry as you can get. So a lot of the diseases at, at past that, uh, that um, attack mangoes, um, we, we, we don't get them here. So, yeah, I, 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 again, I, I feel that I, I finally cracked it. but. Um, uh, if you've come here, though, let me just kind of uh, make one point. This really isn't just about mangoes. This is really about uh, putting a newly uh, planted tree in the ground, uh, a mature tree, that is. So once you put a mature tree in the ground, a grafted tree, a layer tree, etc., in the ground, one of three things can happen. <laughs> Number one, the tree can do nothing at all, just like what it's been doing here. Of course, it's, it's still a bit too early to tell, but I have, I've got a pretty high level of confidence that they, these guys will be okay. So number one, the tree may not do anything at all. <laughs> number two, the leaves will drop, defoliate it completely. Or number three, the, the leaves won't drop, but they would be all wilty, sad looking. If you see your leaves wilting, but not dropping, that's probably, unfortunately, the worst case scenario for your brand new tree. 
uh, that essentially means it's not taking it. It is having a heck of a time adjusting to its new climate for whatever reason. So that's, that's a worst case scenario. The second best case scenario is all the leaves drop. That's actually a good thing. <laughs> that's because the tree is going through a dramatic shock. And generally, almost always, what happens is once it's defoliated completely because it is in survival mode, once it's survived to that mode, you should start seeing new growth uh, shoot up. So that's the second best thing. The best thing, of course, is for the tree not to do anything at all. For the tree to behave just like it was in a container. So that, that's really <laughs> my goal here. So yeah, mangoes. Uh, so in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, the planting of a mature mango tree uh, and also my favorite methods of propagating a mango. Uh, dirt cheap, practically free really, and you're likely going to have great success with it. So, all right, let's put everyone's favorite tropical fruit tree in the ground. Mangoes. I, I just enjoy mango just because it's delicious. <laughs> and also, not just any kind of mango. These are mangoes that, I mean, good luck finding it in your grocery store. I mean, for the most part, in your typical grocery store, you're probably gonna find your average Tommy Atkin, Keed, Kent Mango. Um, oftentimes, well, sometimes maybe honey slash champagne mango. But yeah, no, these are specialized mangoes that you're probably not gonna be able to find in your grocery store. So what are we gonna put in the ground? We're gonna put a, uh, a lemon zest mango here a Kiel Savoy mango here and then back there uh, I'm going to be putting a um, an Alfonso mango in the ground. So Alfonso mangoes are purported to be the better tasting varieties. <laughs> I mean it tastes is extremely objective but hey you know what millions of people can't be wrong right? <laughs> So just wanted to uh, show you really quick. I, I made a, a, a really a kind of a, a, an observation here. Actually, if you come here, let me, let me show you really quick. So after years and years and years of adding wood chip on top of my yard, this is how much topsoil I've got. So let me, let me show you actually. So here you go. Check it out. See the plastic bits coming out? See that? That's when I had a, a lawn in my yard. And these plastic uh, <laughs> strings, I call them, are what uh, the, the sods, the grass, were grown on. So that literally is where the, the grass, the, the layer of grass was on. And all this right here, I don't know if the, the camera can pick it up, but obviously down there, that, that's gray, that's clay soil. But then, okay, so, so that, that's where the grass was. And then it's, it's all black. This is all organic conditioning of my soil. I mean, yeah, look at that. Big difference between the, the color of the broken down wood chip to many, many years compared to, say, clay soil. Yeah, this is what you want. And look at it. I mean, look at all the little roots. I mean, if you look it down here, I, I know I keep saying it, but the roots of trees don't go down that deep. I mean, you know, you see some roots here and there, but below that, it's, it's practically bare. So, I mean, look at it. The, the roots tend to stay where there's a lot of nutrient uh, and more so there's a lot of uh, oxygen. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's really 
why you would want to um, keep applying wood chip or mulch in, in my case. So, quick and simple. I know I've probably done it a million times, but uh, or said it a million times, but uh, when digging the hole, don't focus on the depth of the hole. Uh, in fact, in my case, I, I'm actually going to be planting them above grade, almost on a mound, just because I, I do want the maximum amount of uh, aeration for these guys. Mangoes, unless grown from seed, grafted mangoes such as these, they would like to breed. They, they, they like water, don't get me wrong, uh, but they, they much prefer air. <laughs> Uh, the roots much prefer air. So that being the case, I'm going to plant them slightly above grade for aeration. And also, in my particular case, because of the gazebos that I've got here, as it rains, this section of the yard, of course, my cover patio is on a slope. So all the water is going to come naturally down this way, which would mean it's probably going to get flooded quite a bit in this section, which is why I'm going to plant uh, everything here that, that you see here on kind of a, a mound. So, uh, so that's really it. I mean, if you come here, I've already got the, the holes dug. Um, so I get, I get a lot of flag for planting stuff too close. But um, you know what? I live in a typical subdivision. The yard is fairly small California you know, land price is expensive but uh, I mean it, it's gonna be literally I say oh maybe like well about two feet away from this uh, red longion and no oh, I don't know maybe like a foot away from this uh, manila uh, mango but it's okay they 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 coexist so all right, I'm going to go and put it in the ground now. Well, before I begin, my go-to ingredient. You're going to want to amend the soil, okay, for, for grafted trees, for mature trees. You're going to want to heavily, heavily amend the soil. Really, I, and I, I keep preaching this, but my go-to is, in this case, one-third peat moss, one-third sand, and one-third native dirt. So if you come here really quick, I wanted to show you. So look at this. Peat moss, okay? It, it, it's, it's moist. The cool thing with peat moss is it, it serves really three purposes for me. Well, four technically. Purpose number one, it is it absorbs water when need to uh, and releases it when the tree needs it. Uh, number two, it is very airy. There's a lot of aeration here. Number three, it is going to acidify my soil just a bit, which would greatly be appreciated. Uh, and lastly, it takes a long time for it to degrade, which is good. Uh, if you've noticed uh, my ingredients, practically none of the three ingredients are organic, as in there's no compost. I'm not adding any compost in there. I'm not adding any wood product in there. It is literally peat moss, sand, and native dirt. That has been my experience when it comes to allowing these tropical trees to thrive in our clay soil. So, yeah. Again, try your best to eliminate the uh, organic material. Uh, when putting stuff in the ground. It's okay to do so on top as a dressing. For example, after this, I'm probably going to add some organic fertilizer uh, as well as maybe some compost on top. Not in the dirt, on top. So, all right. Going to go and put it in the ground now. So, that was the expensive method. <laughs> Buying a grafted mature mango tree essentially and then putting it in the ground i mean essentially what you're doing is you're, you're paying the nursery to 
grow it for you in addition and in ensuring that the um, the tree the taste of the fruit is essentially the best that it can be based on on the parent tree that it, it, it was grafted onto so let me show you an easy method uh, this method I mean I've had basically 90% success with essentially germinating mango trees from seed germinating uh, mangoes from like a store-bought mango let me show you how easy it is and the the cool thing too is the fact that practically any mango uh, will suffice so really all you've got to do is crack open a mango take out the seed uh, and then germinate it uh, and then generally in about three to four years th that's really how short of a time it takes for these mangoes to start producing fruits for you so yeah i mean again just the only downside is you, you're not <laughs> i mean again you, you're waiting three to four years that, that's really it in the time span of three to four years that's really nothing to a tree so here's the process cheap easy practically guarantee so i'm gonna peel open a mango so for practice this is an atufu mango closely related to the um manila mango So the next step is just be careful, okay? Because you are literally going to be crack opening the the seed. Just when I say careful, as in don't cut yourself. Just gently slice the top of the mango until you until it's able to um, open into two halves. See it right there? It's cracking open. So, crack it open. Just don't touch the actual seed. You're essentially cracking opening the shell, the protective shell that's in case, uh, encasing the seed. This is all you want. This is what's needed. Next step. Gently pry out these protective uh, film tissue. Okay. Just get as much as you can out of it. So, next step. Get a wet paper towel and then essentially wrap this up and then put it in a ziplock bag what's gonna happen is in about three weeks time life starts happening this is a uh, this was a, a kent mango that i ate at one point Put it in a, a damp paper towel and see the formation of the root system. So again, generally about three weeks time. Let me see if there's any more actually. You just have to damp the towel once, that's it. And then just seal it up in a, a Ziploc bag. This one's actually even more <laughs> mature. Look at that. That is the start of life. So, and in this case, I actually didn't bother to take out the, the film, but that's fine. So now, very important, your growing medium. I've had nearly 100% success with this growing medium. Half peat moss, 
half sand. That's really it. Mix them all up. This is what it's going to look like. White substance is sand mixed in with peat moss. And really, all you've got to do is just put it in, bury it up. I say about maybe two inches uh, deep. That's really it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even bother to try to uh, angle it. I mean, it, again, the, 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 the seedling will sprout out uh, from the top of, uh, towards the top of the soil. So, water it thoroughly. So again, notice I, I am not, for containers, I'm not using any native dirt, dirt, okay? It is literally just two ingredients. I mean, if you've got perlite, go for it. it, it I mean, it helps very uh, certainly. Uh, but I, I find that it, it's really not necessary. But again, it wouldn't hurt. I'm just going to let it slowly drain. And it helps to label it uh, along with the date. Yeah, I mean, this is perfect drainage. This is what you want. And then all you've got to do at this point is put the container in a, a warm location, uh, indirect sun, preferably. Uh, in my case, I actually just put it in my garage uh, underneath a glow light. Um, and in generally about maybe a month's time frame, uh, you'll see uh, the actual seedling spread out. I'm going to thoroughly water it one more time. Why not? So, what's going to happen is you're going to get something like this. He's going, uh, I want to say he's two years now. Uh, this is probably the third year. But yeah, there are actually a lot of benefits to propagating uh, ger uh, and germinating uh, mangoes from seed. One of which would be they acclimate so much better in our clay soil. Uh, in fact, if you come here, see this um, golden glow mango here? I actually uh, put him in the ground last night. Oh, well, uh, not last night, but uh, at the same time that I put the other uh, mangoes in the ground. Um, but yeah, I actually didn't even mend the hole at all. Just dug the hole, put it in, surrounded it with native dirt. So that's one of the benefits is it, it, very likely it's not going to have any difficulties acclimating to your clay soil. The other benefit uh, is the fact that uh, as the tree grows, uh, it, it really does naturally shade itself. I mean, in this case, I, I am providing it with some structure support, but for the most part, when you look at the, the, all the seedlings that I've got there, Structurally, they are mostly good. You do not need to, uh, like what I did here, you do not need to provide them with structural support. Uh, you know, compared to say like the grafted mangoes. Yeah, the problem with grafted mangoes is they need a lot of structural support. I mean, <laughs> yeah, otherwise it, it, it's just very filmsy. Uh, so you don't get that issue with the uh, seedling mangoes. Um, now there are, there, there's really just one downside that I can think of with, with some grafted, man, uh, some seedling mangoes. And that would be once they produce fruits, the fruits itself, depending on the variety, may not be true to seed in the sense that uh, it, it may not taste like the, the parent fruit that, uh, that you've opened up. It may taste worse. It may taste way better. You just don't know. But it is a mango. Uh, so yeah, that, that's uh, really the, the gist of 
growing mangoes in, in our uh, climate, I mean, I would encourage you, if you are able to, just germinate them from seed. I mean, these guys, regardless of the variety, they do so well here in our climate. Uh, if germinated from seed. Uh, if not germinated from seed, uh, then this is what happens. This is what uh, you are seeing. So yeah, this is uh, what it looks like now that I've got a chance to uh, prop them up. Again, emphasis on structural support. These guys need a lot of structural support. So going back to the grafted mangoes really quick. There is one thing that I actually wanted to show you. This is something that I always do with my mangoes. And that would be to, actually if you, um, if you come here, I wanted to actually show you this really quick uh, in, in person. See if you can uh, see it from that angle. All right. See that? That's the formation of a flower. That's essentially a brack. So this is what I do, okay? Sadly, because I want this tree to mostly focus on its root establishment for the first year or two, I'm going to take out about 90% of it, as in take out the bracts, because I do not want him to flower, because this is very resource intensive. So notice, I'm not taking out the whole thing. I'm only taking out about, you know, 90% of it. Uh, yeah, just about 90% of it. The reason for that is if I take out the whole thing, it's, it's just going to try to uh, send more energy to regrow another set of flowers. So by taking most of it out, uh, the tree should, <laughs> emphasis on should, should know to just stop sending energy to it and, and instead just remain, you know, send, send the remaining energy to what's left of the flower. And then what's going to happen is in about a month's time, I would then come back and take out the whole flower. And in doing so, uh, again, it, 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 it tells the tree to just, you know what, to, this year you're not going to focus on flower production. Instead, just focus on getting used to your new environment. That's essentially what you're doing with, with, the, uh, with the tree by removing the, the flowers. It's a, it's a sad feeling, but just just wait a year or two. You'll you'll get the best tasting mangoes uh, <laughs> out there in your yard. So yeah, that's really it. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I know I keep emphasizing on this, but uh, mangoes especially. See the uh, see the paint. I also uh, of course I, I did paint the the, the down towards the roots. Uh, again, just it, it, it helps them out, especially when the blazing sun is just beating them down, uh, especially uh, this brand new tree that's just in the ground. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, these guys should do really well here. Um, so, yeah, just mango, they, they do grow here. Just winter time, they, they may look kind of sad. Um, but you know what? All my mango trees have uh, managed to bounce back. Um, so then again, <laughs> this year, this winter was especially brutal. I mean, I, I don't recall the previous few years being this cold, but uh, I, I think this particular winter was an exception. That's why it, it's so sad looking. Uh, but at the same time, these guys are very much alive and will bounce back. So, all right, that's, uh, that's mango for you. Really, anyone can grow mangoes. Try, start off with a seedling route. All right, have a good afternoon.